soured wood tree right next to my house. This is the 4th of July, 2023. Blooming, blooming quite nicely. Bees are making a little honey off of it. I've got quite a few of these on my property. I live on 13 acres and I'm gonna guess I have 200 trees like this. This one's a particularly nice one and it is right next to my house because this is my front porch right here. Let's have a look at what's happening here. This is the first medium on all these colonies in Turnerville, Georgia and on a sourwood flow and they're looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the color looks like on a hive tool. Yeah, get the soda. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you see any color at all on a hive tool with sourwood, it will turn up as color in a jar. Um, that looks pretty good. That's going to be kind of a, a extra light amber in a jar type of color. Mm -hmm. Let me know what you think of the taste. Not bad. Not bad? Yeah. Okay. I'd say three quarters of the colonies here are going to get a deep super on top of this medium. They've been packing it into this medium. We're actually a day or two late. I don't like them to get this full before we put the next super on, but we had the 4th of July weekend and we had some rain and we're just running a little bit late. Pretty good yard of bees. Have a few restarts here. You can see a couple with no supers. Those would have been duds a while back, which we've restarted to fill the spots. They'll be good colonies for winter, of course. We call this yard the hay barn for obvious reasons. We are on the south side of a big hay barn. We use this hay barn as a windbreak because the cold winter winds that happen here always come from the north by northwest. So if we can get against a building or a tree line or something, it makes a huge difference. We're in Raven Gap, Georgia, which is just barely south of the North Carolina border. Um, Raven Gap has a post office, but that's about it. It's not much of a town. Beautiful area, just south of Dillard, north of Clayton. We have a lot of yards in this area. This is the beginning of what we call Wolf Fork Valley. We have one, two, three, four, five yards in this valley back up through here. The trees are kind of blocking the draw, the, the distance up the valley, but very lovely area. We have a lot of honey to lift up here, uh, put on fresh supers. This yard is in Wolf Fork Valley also, near Raven Gap. We put these empty boxes on about a week ago. They've been packing in some Dutch white clover. July 10th, we're taking these boxes off, putting empties on, putting the full ones over and escape. And this will be the last time we do this. From this point forward, they will either make sourwood or not. The next time we come, we'll know for sure. Anyway, I've been making honey just as the last few yards. It's just not been sourwood yet. This location usually starts around the 4th of July, so it's running almost a week late, and uh, we're hoping it'll come still. It's July 10th. I've been working up in Wolf Fork Valley all day. All the colonies have been piling in this Dutch white clover. This super was just put on on Friday, and today's Monday and they've got it about two-thirds full and uh, I don't think I've ever made this much honey in mid-July unless sourwood was involved. I think in all my years here in North Georgia this is a first. Usually by now the clover is completely done. But this year it just seems like it's just getting going. Very odd. So we were here yesterday and took all the supers off, and uh, but it was late and the bees were ill, so we left the escapes. So Seth's got a problem. 
right off the bat if there's no bees in the super we have to look and see if there's a problem this one's doing okay this is not many days i don't know when we were here last but it's not been that long less than a week less than a week yeah let's give this a taste seth okay <laughs> yeah, Red Bull and Sour would pro probably might taint your uh, taste buds a little. The color's right. Yeah, oh. mm -hmm. That's pretty all right. That's pretty all right. There ain't much else in that. I think we're finally making sourwood honey, Jason. Right, right. At least in this location. Mm -hmm. We're in Mountain City. Mountain City is an interesting place. You know, I don't know if you know this, Jason. This is right on the Blue Ridge Divide. No. They call it the Blue Ridge Continental Divide. There's a ditch right out here. It goes under this property. If you go 100 feet north, all the water runs to the Little Tennessee, Big Tennessee, eventually to the Mississippi River. If you go 100 feet south of this yard, it all runs to the Savannah River. That's good, honey. That is really good. You want, have you tasted it yet? Mm -hmm. That's you want to? That's the best I've tasted this year. Yeah. Which I ain't tasted much. We'll get the ladies' a, a, a opinion here. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good, honey. Really good. Let's just hope we see this all the way up. Yes. All the yeah. Way up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, supers around. <laughs> <laughs> So this is an interesting field. You know, at first glance, you'd think this would be really great for the bees, but it really isn't. The only thing in here that the bees actually work are, is this red clover. A lot of people mistake red clover and crimson clover. They're not the same thing. Crimson clover blooms in early April in our area. This red stuff comes in summer. Bumblebees work the heck out of it, but you don't see bees on it much because their tongues aren't long enough to reach the end of the florets, if that's what you call them. But Caucasian bees are a little better. Their tongues are a little longer than Italians and Carniolan, and sometimes you'll see them on it a bit. I see, I see a couple bees out here, so they're working it a little bit. And especially when there's a lot of moisture in the ground, which there is right now because we've had so much rain lately. This stuff right here, I rarely see a bee on it, and if I do, it's just kind of looks like they're sniffing around a bit. Do you know the name of this? I don't. I don't know okay. what that means. I'll look it up. Jack will know. Jack knows everything. I'll show him the video and he'll know right what it is. It's interesting. Looks like bees should work it, but they don't. And then the other thing is this black-eyed Susan. Um, bees don't work that at all. I've never seen a bee work on black-eyed Susan. It's all throughout this field and uh, they, they just don't touch it. Anyway, a beautiful field. Uh, I love it that she's not mowed it, but uh, there's just not much there for bees. This yard has been interesting. There's an interesting thing to note here. They have changed over and they're making sourwood and you know, we put the wildflower up and put some escapes on. But we had some issues in this yard. There is, uh, there was a number of duds. They were raising cells a month ago or I should say mating, virgin queens. We had a lot of cells a month ago. And there was a lot of duds in here. And I have to wonder if it has to do with the fact that there aren't any other bee yards up here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're supplying their own drones. And whenever I see that, I always see a, a lower mating success. We do best, of course, when there's yards a mile or two miles out. And when, we, when we're relying on drones from the same yard the cells are in, we just don't have the same take. I see it almost every time. Anyway, they are making sourwood, so that's good news. And these singles will come along, and you know they just had cells in them too. So we'll go down to the lower part of Betty Creek and see how they're doing. It's really nice to see some colonies in our outfit switching to sourwood now.
This yard's doing fair. There's a few smaller colonies in here, but some of them are doing pretty good. They're just, it seems like they're switching to sourwood. We're not positive. I know I keep wearing this sourwood subject out. It's actually a big deal to us. We were just up the valley to another bee yard up there, and it seemed like they were switching to sourwood. Here, we're not sure. The thing about sourwood, if you gotta wonder what you're tasting, you really probably aren't in it yet. When you taste sourwood, you kinda, you kinda know. It's so distinct and different and good. We're probably a quarter mile from the North Carolina border. We're gonna have lunch and then head up into North Carolina and check some of them yards up there, see how they're doing. Basically what we're doing is lifting off, we're still lifting off supers that are not sourwood and putting on a fresh super. This will be the last time in this location for that. It's the 12th of July. If it doesn't come today or tomorrow, it, it's not coming. That's probably my opinion, at least in this location. Should be here by now. We were here five days ago. These colonies were making mountain mint and we lifted up the supers and put escapes on. That's mountain mint, and now they're loaded with sourwood. Five days, let's see what we're looking. They definitely switched over. Yeah, tastes nice light. Tastes like sourwood too. How are you looking over here, Seth? Uh, I don't know. Tell me what it tastes like. Pretty good. Pretty good. Let's see what Brandon's got here. Okay. Thank you. Let's have a look under that escape. Let's see how they've done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they did well. That's five days. John, did I hear, did I hear you say something about being worn out? Oh, yeah, yeah. Worn out. Definitely. <laughs> worn out. Yeah, it's been an interesting day. It's just muggy. It's hot. Lots of weight. Heavy. Been heavy. We've been lit up some heavy. Heavy, heavy heavy supers, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm ready to go back to the barn. We're not quite done yet. We gotta take those nukes over to uh, hoppers. Well, we've been through the whole outfit except for one more yard in the last week and a half. Um, this is one of the few yards that's actually making sourwood. Normally in a decent year, this yard of bees would already have two solid supers on it and working into their third. They've got one that's partially full and uh, we're here to put the second one on, but it's getting kind of late-ish. I, I don't think they're going to fill the second one, but we got to put it on. This is sourwood, thankfully. Yeah, that's really good honey. Mm. Out of 40 yards of bees, I'm going to guess I could only do this and say that in about five or six of them. And the volume's not there. We're not going to have the quantity. So, a uh, little bit of a financial hit, but that's part of the game in beekeeping. you got to take the good years with the bad years. And this is not a bad year because it's not a total shutout, but it's not a great year. One of the drawbacks is that because we're going to have a limited crop, we're not going to have, I hope we can have enough to make it through the season in our own retail store. I won't be selling any in bulk, that's for sure. Normally we sell barrels and buckets. Won't be doing that. And we'll probably limit the wholesale case sales to, to really good, um, consistent customers that have been with us for a while. We like to take care of our loyal customers if we can. We do have some barrels of honey, or barrels of sourwood from last year left. I think there's six or seven. That's actually what we're selling at the moment. And we'll sell that first and put the newer crop in barrels. And when last year's is gone, we'll start selling this year's. Um, I don't like to do that with sourwood. Sourwood is one of those honeys that uh, changes with time. When it's a year old, it's definitely much different than it was when it was fresh. Other honeys that are like that are uh, saw palmetto, orange blossom. I know there's several others. 
a year later they're darker. You can tell, still tell it's orange or sourwood or whatever, but there's a noticeable difference. And that's the case with sourwood. Our last year's sourwood is already tasting much different than it did when it was fresh, but it's still real good honey. It's just a disappointment that we won't have a lot of fresh to sell through the whole season to everybody that wants it. So we're going to put another super on these and hopefully they'll fill part of it. Check the one last yard which is just down the creek a few miles and then we will be done checking for sourwood. We're done putting supers on. It seems so odd that after all of our work that it's suddenly come to the end. Uh, Seth and I were just talking about uh, how quickly the year has gone by. We've just worked so hard and we worked so hard to get to this moment where we're making sourwood honey. And in, in two days, we're going to go to our southern yards and start pulling the crop off and treating. Uh, it's, it's an odd feeling. It's almost a, almost a melancholy feeling to be at that point. It's like the, the, the honey producing season is over for us. This yard's probably got another five days in it, and then it'll be finished. And uh, the next problem with sourwood is we've got to get it all off as fast as possible because there will be odds and ends of other things coming in now. There'll be a little bit of sumac coming in. I don't know, some of this red clover might persist for a little while. And we got to get this sourwood off as fast as possible when they're done making it so we can keep it as pure as possible. We have a lot of honey this year that's, I'm going to call it sourwood-ish. You can taste the sourwood in it and it's great honey, but I'm probably not going to be able to label it as sourwood and that's part of the disappointment. But uh, I would say in beekeeping, you got to be able to ride the wave, the ups and the downs. If uh, you'll, you'll drive yourself nuts if you're um, always expecting the best, and you know, and then when you run into years like this, you're disappointed. Uh, it's just part of beekeeping, up and down like a yo-yo. And again, it hasn't been a disaster year. We made a fairly good crop of spring honey. We'll have some sourwood, and then we got all those supers. Every, almost every colony. Well, I won't say almost every colony, but a lot of our colonies have a super or two of this other stuff that we can't call sourwood. So that's not a complete shutout either. That, that has some value. Last Sunday, I posted the video called Thoughts on Sourwood. And later that afternoon, I asked my wife what she was doing. Suzette was looking at her tablet and had this long paper of things she was writing. I asked her what she was doing and she said, well, apparently you talked about sourwood because we haven't, we haven't had this many sourwood orders in, in a long time. That one, in that one day, we got a lot of sourwood orders. I wanted to let the people know that they're getting last year's sourwood, still good honey. It's a shame it can't be the fresh stuff because the fresh stuff will be so much better. Um, I'm sure I'll get lots of input from the people purchasing that honey, whether they like it or not. It'll be interesting to see if people still think that last year's sourwood is uh, really good or one of the better honeys. What else can I say, Seth? Nothing? Nah. Seth, pretty good there. Seth's speechless. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> <laughs> okay.